Drunk Driving Awareness Month, sobriety checkpoints are being set up all over the country, but not here in Oregon. They are illegal here. During our Coin 6 News investigation, we found out one man is standing in the way of that. Chris Woodard asked him some tough questions. Chris? Well, Kelly, this all started several weeks ago when we were digging into some of the research, looking to find out would allowing sobriety checkpoints here help save lives? Well, we quickly found out here there's an underlying battle between two powerful men. This is her nightmare. I was notified at 5 a.m. by a chaplain on the door at the doorstep, just like you see on TV. A motionless bike lying on the ground. I don't cry as much as I used to, but I cry unexpectedly. Her son, dead, hit by a drunk driver while riding his bike in Portland. Dustin Finney was 28. The last things we said to each other were, I love you. And it's been two years. I am angry. Christy Finney Dunn is now turning heartbreak into hard work. With Dustin always close to her heart, this mother has made it her mission to stop drunk driving. It was a surprise to me, yes. But she ran into a roadblock when she found out sobriety checkpoints like this one in Albuquerque aren't allowed in Oregon. I would prefer people be put out for a few minutes than go through the devastation that so many families like mine go through for the rest of their lives. Oregon is one of only 12 states that don't allow checkpoints. I always believe that I can make a difference. That's why I'm here. Senator Rod Monroe wants to get Oregon on board. We don't want to lock people up. We want people to stop drinking and driving and killing people. Just last month, Monroe vowed he would propose the legislation again. He's tried legalizing the checkpoints each of the last three legislative sessions. Well, I don't give up easy. His bill has never reached a vote. Why do you think your bill keeps dying here at the state capitol? One guy. That one man, he says, Senator Floyd Prezonsky. Under our system, if you're a, a powerful committee chair, you have tremendous power. There's got to be that balance. In Prezonsky, a fellow Democrat, is the Judiciary Committee chair. We went to him for answers. Why prevent this from getting to a vote? Well, the reality of what we're looking at is how do we actually uh, interface and uh, keep people from driving under the influence of intoxicants. Uh, we have what's known as enhanced enforcement patrols. Some people call them saturation patrols. They seem to be uh, much better at uh, dealing with the issues that we have. Prezonsky argues the tools law enforcement has now are more successful than stopping thousands of innocent people. And because allowing checkpoints would require a change to the state constitution, he has the support of the ACLU. If the voters approved the change that's being proposed, that would be the first time since statehood um, that our Constitution has been amended to erode these fundamental rights against government intrusion. Some people ask if there's even a chance that this could save lives. Why not let the voters decide? Well, I guess what I would say is that we've already seen studies. There's a study that came out in 2003 called the Green Study. Uh, that actually shows that these uh, enhanced patrol enforcement patrols or saturation patrols have been as effective and not more effective. We looked into the numbers in Oregon and it depends on your definition of effective. Police are arresting less people for DUII, down by more than 4,000 from 2008 to 2012. But DUII deaths are also down from 171 in 2008 to 123 last year. We're doing a sobriety checkpoint tonight there. You had any alcohol and beverages no. tonight? <laughs> no. Okay. This is a checkpoint in Ohio. And we wanted to know, can 38 other states, including them, all really be wrong? Any alcohol tonight? Have you drank any alcohol no. tonight? <laughs> okay. In Ohio, where this checkpoint was set up earlier this year, they had less alcohol-related deaths per person in 2012 than here in Oregon but barely. A lot of folks think that we just do it for the enforcement aspect of it, but we also do it for the educational portion of it. A study by Centers for Disease Control scientists just last year says publicized sobriety checkpoints do reduce drunk driving. In Oregon, Mothers Against Drunk Driving is pushing legislators to make the change. Once you're a victim, you can't go back. It's done. And it, it just, it'll rip your heart out. Their research says highly visible sobriety checkpoints would decrease alcohol-related fatalities by 8%. And hopefully save other mothers and fathers 
and siblings from going through the pain, the indescribable pain that I go through sometimes. It is a battle being fought here among lawmakers, but a battle whose results will no doubt reach far beyond these walls. Now, while we did focus on Oregon in that story, you may have noticed on the map we showed the checkpoints are also illegal in Washington. Now, everyone involved here says they're committed to trying to fight drunk driving. They just argue about the best way to do that. Now, in order for any change to the law here, lawmakers would have to allow a vote of the people who would have to approve that change to the search and seizure portion of the state constitution. Kelly.